What's up? My name is Technobo here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another video. In this quick video, I'll be showing you how to set up a Minecraft 1.19 fabric server. If you'd like to find any other 1.19 guides, check the description down below as I've covered a ton of different server platforms, mods, etc. Anyways, on with the video. In the description down below, you'll find a link to the Fabric MC server. This is brand new and really helps simplify the process of running a Minecraft Fabric server. When you get to this page, select Minecraft 1.19, the latest Fabric loader and the latest installer version, whatever it is, these are usually selected by default. Then click Download Executable Server Jar. When this is done, we can move this to another folder so we can install our server. For me, I'll create a folder on my desktop called Fabric 1.19. Then I'll drag the download into here. Now that we've placed this file in here, we'll head back to that link in the description down below and we'll look for the launch command. We'll be selecting all of this here by clicking on it once and right click copy. This is what we'll use to launch our Fabric server. So heading back to the Fabric folder over here, I'll right click and choose new then text document. We'll be calling this say run.bat. Make sure to get rid of .txt and make sure that you get the pop-up like this where we can click yes. The icon should change and we've successfully changed it to a Windows batch file. If you don't see .txt at the very top on Windows 10, click view and then make sure that view file name extensions is ticked. On Windows 11, click view then show and make sure file name extensions is ticked over here as well. We can also choose hidden items on both Windows 10 and 11 to make life a bit easier for other things as well. We'll then right click run.bat and choose edit where it'll open up inside of a program like Notepad. You can use any text editor to edit this file. We'll right click and paste what we copied in here and we'll save it. All we need to do here is customize how much RAM we want for our server and make sure that this name over here, including .jar, matches the .jar file in the folder here. This is incredibly important and do keep this in mind if we're updating it later on. Back to RAM. XMX means maximum amount of RAM and 2G means 2 gigabytes. This is the absolute minimum that Fabric recommends to run your server on. If you know what to type in here, you can simply type it in and save it Congratulations, you've now successfully set up your server. Otherwise, if you don't know how much RAM to give your server, hold Control Shift and press Escape, all three keys at the same time, to open up your task manager. Head across to the Performance tab and look for Memory. Yes, I know mine looks different. I'm running Windows 11 Insider. So everything should pretty much be available for you on your screen right now. You'll see how much RAM is currently in use and how much is currently available. Basically, we can give Minecraft some of our available RAM, and the more we give it, the better the server performs, at least usually. But do keep in mind we want some extra headroom for browsers, our own Minecraft client copy as well, etc, etc, if you're all running that off of one computer. So, for example, my computer has 16 gigabytes of RAM. Windows is currently using 6 gigabytes. I have 10 gigabytes available. I'd be comfortable giving Minecraft or the Minecraft server 8 gigabytes of RAM, which means that 2 is still available on my computer for web browsing and other programs to run happily in the background. You don't want to give Minecraft or the Minecraft server all of your RAM, otherwise you may run into some performance issues later on. So, with that number in your head, type whatever it is in here and hit Ctrl S to save. Note that you can change the G to a capital M and type it in in megabytes. 8G, 8 gigabytes, is equal to 8000 M. 8,000 megabytes. I'll leave it as 8G because I have a ton of RAM on my computer and I'll save it using Control S. Then I can close out of it and run run.bat to start up our fabric server. You'll see a ton of things are then downloaded and new folders are appearing, but we'll need to wait for this to finish first. When it's done, you'll see eula.txt, open this up with any text editor and change eula false to eula true. Control S to save, close it and now we can run our server once more to be able to join it. We can place mods in the mods folder, etc. In this mods folder, you'll need to download and place the fabric API. You'll find this linked in the description down below. Simply head here, look for fabric 1.19 API, click download, wait a few seconds for this to complete and when this jar file downloads onto your computer in just a moment, when it's done, drag and drop it out into the mods folder 
support most of the mods for Fabric to work. Most of them require Fabric API. And that's really about it. For me, I'll run my server and I'll show you how to join it as well as how to get your friends to join as well. So for now, I'll run it and wait for it to start up. In the meantime, I'll open my Minecraft launcher. Then I'll select Minecraft Java Edition. And from the dropdown, I'll select Fabric Loader 1.19, then play. In the description down below, you'll find a guide on how to install this, as well as how to customize it, etc. if you don't already know how the Fabric client works. There we go, Fabric is now loaded. I'll click Multiplayer and I'll click Add Server. Inside of here, in the server address, I'll be typing 127.0.0.1, which means localhost. This is your own computer. So I'll click Done and I'll be able to join it pretty much immediately. In the background, you'll see that I'm loading into my server. Techno has joined the game. And there we are, congratulations. You've now set up your own fabric server. You and your friends would technically be able to join, though not quite just yet. For now, I'll tab out. I'll OP myself using OP Techno. I'll tab back in and there we are. Slash game mode creative. Now we're admin on our own server. Awesome. Though it may be a bit lonely and people may not know how to join you. So let's talk about that. I'll close the game for now. If you want people on the same local network to join you, all you need to do is hold start and press R at the same time and inside of here we'll be typing in CMD then hit enter. In here type in IP config and hit enter once more to bring up some information about our computer's networks. We're looking for the way that we're connected to the internet. For me it's my ethernet adapter. Look for IPv4 address and this is the address that someone sitting next to you on the same Wi-Fi network or Ethernet network would use to connect it to your server. In my case, and your case more than likely, 192.168.1. something. In my case, 1.20. Do keep a note of this number as we will be using it later on for port forwarding if you'd like anyone outside of your local network to connect to your server. That may sound scary, though do keep in mind I have incredibly simple guides linked in the description down below that make everything a lot more simple. Though at this point, someone sitting next to you may not be able to connect to your server and it's more than likely due to the Windows firewall or a third-party firewall or antivirus. To allow Minecraft through our firewall, hit start, type in firewall and open up Windows Defender firewall with advanced security. If you don't see this window over here, you'll more than likely see a window about settings with an advanced button on the left hand side. You'll need to click that to get here. If you see this yellow text, do keep in mind your firewall is managed by third party software and you'll need to do it there instead. You'll need to Google for a guide for that. If you don't see this and you're just relying on the Windows Defender firewall, which is default, click inbound rules on the left hand side and new rule on the right hand side. Now we can start filling out some information. We'll select port, next, TCP, and we'll type in 25565 for the port over here. I'll select all and copy it using Control A and Control C as we'll be pasting this quite a lot later on. I'll then click next, allow the connection, next, all three ticked, next, and I'll type in MC 1.19 or anything that you want in the name section here, then click finish. Then we'll click new rule once more. We'll choose port, next, UDP this time, paste it in, 25565, next, allow the connection, next, all three ticked, next, MC 1.19, and finish. Then we'll head across to outbound rules and do the exact same. New rule, port, next, TCP 25565, next, allow, next, all three ticked, next, MC 1.19, finish. New rule, port, next, UDP 25565, next, allow the connection, next, all three ticked, next, MC 1.19, and congratulations, we've now allowed our Minecraft 1.19 fabric server through our Windows firewall and we can close out of that. Someone sitting next to you should now be able to connect to your server that's running on your computer as long as this window is open somewhere on your computer and the server is running. Congratulations. But what about someone connecting to your server over the internet? More than likely, it's not working at all. In the description down below, you'll find a link to port forwarding guides for not only one router, but multiple routers as well. The process for connecting to your server may be a little bit different depending on how you're connected to the internet. 
if you just have your computer, a router, and then the internet, whether it's a fiber box or a LTE or 5G router, then you can follow the normal port forwarding guide. Though, if you're connected to a router that's connected to a router, to another one, etc., before you reach the internet, you'll need to follow the multi-router port forwarding guide in the description down below. Don't worry about how scary it sounds, it's incredibly simple and easy to follow along with, and when you're done with it, forwarding port 25565, other people should then be able to connect to your server through the internet, all you have to do is Google what is my IP and give them your IP address. It's incredibly simple and easy to do. Anyways, that's really about it. To save our server and close it, type save hyphen all and hit enter to save absolutely everything. And to close it, type stop, then hit enter. It'll stop and save everything and close our Fabric 1.19 server. It's incredibly simple. Anyways, that's really about it for this quick guide on setting up a Fabric 1.19 server. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Techno Behavior Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.